Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel and in this lesson I'm going to show you a technique to build melodies through rhythm. Okay, now that sounds a bit weird generally as a statement because melodies are melodies, right? They are notes which happen on a particular scale with intervals and so on. However, we seem to forget that every great melody ever composed has great rhythm behind it. In other words, you don't have a melody like this. Right, right now there's no gaps between the notes. There's no time for the there's no time for the notes to breathe a little, right? It's just one note after the other and then the faster you go as you divide the beat more and if you play even more notes, then you're sort of developing like a machine gun effect on the piano, which is like an endless array of notes which I don't want to bore you with right now. So, a great approach which I found to develop melody organically. What I mean by organically is you don't really need music theory you don't need some <clears throat> prior song or genre to inspire you you can just do it so we all have this innate ability to create rhythmic phrases or rhythm in general because whenever songs are played to us we move we, we move our body we tap we follow the pattern of the music we all know that we will rock you is right no one even a non-musician can do that, right? So the whole idea here is we are trying to capitalize on that natural ability which we are all, one might argue, born with and then we use that rhythm to actually come to the piano, take the ingredients of the rhythm and then cook it up into a melody, okay? So let me just show you what I mean with a with a simple rhythmic example. So something like this. So I'm sort of now imagining this maybe in any environment, maybe while walking my dog or in a shower or while brushing one's teeth or reading the newspaper, anything for that matter, you know, you could be sitting anywhere or moving around and creating something like this. So what have I done again? I kind of forgot it. Let me remember something like and I'm using short syllables like pum 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 dub dum or I could even whack some parts of the body like whatever sounds interesting to you right so you could tap it out on your body maybe chest for some lower stuff and your leg for some higher snare drumish stuff, or you can vo vocalize it in some rhythmic way, like da ba da ba dum pum, da ga dum boom pa, chik boom boom chik dum. Or if you know konakol, that's a great way to kind of express yourself rhythmically. But pretty much anything, you could even whack something around you, you know. So as long as you put any sound into context, it will always be music. Right, You could be whacking any piece of furniture around you and if you think about music, it will definitely become music. So now I've made this pattern, tagadam pam parabam pam pam pam, it's stuck inside my head. So I want to bring it out on the piano. Now the first thing I need to do is figure out what scale of interest I'm going to work with. So I'm going to choose my favorite, I guess, A major scale, which is this. <laughs> G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, G sharp. So I'm going to sort of confine myself within those notes. I don't want to go out of that for now because I'm trying to also scale across this melody and develop patterns around it, which we are going to come to very shortly. So one thing you could just do is just noodle around, as we call it, and uh, just express yourself on the scale, keeping that organically created rhythm, which was what now? Dagadam pam parabam pam pam pam. Okay, so something like this. Or maybe you'd, you'd like to just start with one note. Dabba dum pum ba ba bum. Of course, that doesn't be, make a great melody because it's just one note, right? So maybe something like. Right, you'll mess it up a bit, but just start with the notes of the scale. Start with one note or maybe two notes. Or just an A major chord. Right? 
और कीप योर हैंड्स वेरी क्लोज टू इच अदर ए बी सी शार्प डी ई एंड डिवेलप पैटर्न विच कैन रियली use all use up all the fingers also give you a nice finger exercise so if you don't like the melody it's at least going to become an awesome finger exercise which you're never going to find in any book you've given yourself your own finger exercise okay so i'm going to come up with a tune now confined to just the a b c sharp d e the first five notes of the a major scale something like Okay, wasn't it still the same rhythm? Da ba dum pum, pa da bum pum pum pum. I I stuck with the same groove. So da ba dum pum, pa da dum pum pum pum. So you see, now my rhythm has come to life. Maybe I had already sung this uh, organically in the shower or wherever, or maybe I didn't. Maybe I just thought of it as a nice, cool rhythmic phrase, and imagine that it will come into a great melody, uh, at least which I like. So you now you go. Param pam param pam pam pam, and I want you to learn this with me. I'm going to slow it down for you. Param pam param re da re da. Try singing; that can help. Param pam param re da da da. Param pam param re da da. Articulate it nicely. Pa ba bam. Pum staccato there, da da dum pum, pa da de da da legato at the end. So it creates a nice dynamic. And whenever playing music, I remember we started this with rhythm. What does rhythm need the most? It needs people to move. So you need to move if you want other people to move. So create the pulse somewhere within you. It's a four by four or four beats per bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So what can I do to express the pulse? I could just play a single A, which is the root of the scale. It'll work awesome. So just play A. Or maybe you could go two A's like that, just to keep. the rhythm and the melody into perspective practice that it's also nice once you've come up with this melody to also kind of put it a bit under the microscope and see how many parts are there in this melody so if i break it down i feel that it has three parts doesn't it pa ba bam pam pa ba bam pa ba ba right part 1 part 2 part 3 so it's sort of like a sentence with punctu with with nice punctuation so you could go pararam pam boom boom pararam pam you just play that if you like pa ba bam pam boom boom pararam pam then you could go part 2 pararam pam pararam pararam pam pararam Pararam pam pararam, and now finish the puzzle. Pa ba bam pam parare da da da, pararam tan tarare. Or blend something which has a minimal set of notes, which could just be part A and part B of the bigger melody, and then put it all together with the with all the three parts. Something like this. Pa ba bam pam parare da da da, pararam tan tararam. Pararam pam pararam tam pam pam pararam pam parare. Right, that becomes a lot more rememberable, I guess. So you have a lot of ways of scaling up and building the pattern creatively. I'm sure you will also come up with things of your own as you go through the journey. So let's now move this even forward. So I'm quite happy with what I'm doing in the right hand, but I think we need to. drive it a bit forward and take this melody for a spin right so what we could do in the left hand is just move around your scale and the bass movement is really great because it can also dictate what chord you're going to uh, inevitably play or what someone else is going to play uh, you know in the band context so maybe i'm going to start with the root change it around maybe Quite like F sharp, which is the relative minor. D, building up to E and A. 
So I like that. I like starting with maybe one, four, five, and six of the scale. Those are usually the most popular intervals. It's used in all the standard chord progressions. F sharp, four. Simplified also. See, that's how you take the same melody and put it into different perspectives. Like I, like I sometimes say, you're just driving the melody which is in a car, so to speak. You're just driving it around. Otherwise, it's just stuck in the garage or in the neighborhood. You're actually moving it forward because of the harmony and because of the bass movement. Okay. So what have we done so far? We have a nice pattern which we came up with organically. Then we sort of chopped it up and created mini patterns. And then we looked at the left hand doing some interesting movements. Maybe the left hand could also do very interesting rhythmic things. So we leave a few videos and a playlist in our YouTube description. So do check that out. We have done a lot of work on left hand patterns and left hand rhythm in general using chords and just simple rhythm. So you may want to watch a few more of our lessons focusing on the left hand stuff. Okay, so. Where are we so far? Now we float the left hand with a with a consistent right hand melody, right? So, how can we make this even more interesting if this is not already interesting enough? We can now look at this created melodic phrase or motif, if you will, in a very pattern-like environment. What I mean by that is you can try and restructure it or replay it at different points of the keyboard, staying in the same scale. So we are trying to still be in A major, but we are trying to represent it in different sounding ways. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that and then I will explain. So the same melody. Now I can change my handhold to somewhere here. I'm using a five finger handhold. So I'm going from A. Now I'm drifting my hand to D. Now with A, I started with the third note, right? With D, why can't I start with the same third note? But I need the ring finger to go to G sharp because I'm on A major scale. So this one, literally copy the finger orders, right? Middle, ring, pinky, like that. And then replace it here so it's almost the same rhythm but presented in a very different way right so you have then then right now I moved my hand up to E which is the fifth and played the same pattern from the E shape And then you can go to the F sharp. So if you observe with all of these melodies, you could also look at an accompanying note. So I guess the accompanying note could be the first note of the pattern, which you're not playing first, but you're, you're playing that first. But this is the lowest note. So you could think of maybe just copying that here. And now jumping the pattern. the D which is the 4 and now jumping it up to the 5 you could even jump to the 6th come back to the 4 and now you have a lot more to play with I like this kind of approach because the phrase was very rhythmic. It started by just pure sheer luck, I guess, because you just gave yourself that chance to organically construct the music. But then you 
held on to that idea you don't want to leave it and just let it go back into the air from where it came from so then we try to go to our piano think of a scale in this case a major try and enjoy it a bit try and see where where it takes you and then we landed up with a tune like somehow that seemed to sound nice and then we really extracted all the juice from that tune by then you know moving our left hand looking at the melody in fragments or in smaller sub melodies and then what we did is we converted the melody itself into a pattern and we start flo- started floating the pattern from the root then we went up the fourth just changed our hand hold and uh, this is also very common on guitars and other stringed instruments they just change the sh- they retain the same scale but they just change the shape or where their hand position starts from next okay so this is basically an approach i'm sure there are many approaches and there are many approaches which even i will probably discover in my lifetime as i continue to grow as a musician myself but this is an approach which i thought you would find quite useful because sometimes we overthink a music composition a lot of ideas we come up with interestingly enough don't even come from our primary instrument it may just come by a singing which is why i encourage you to have some idea of singing as a piano player it can really help and also you could just figure out rhythm like i said at the beginning of the lesson rhythm is something which comes to human beings the most naturally again this is jason here from nathaniel and there's one more thing which we have waiting for you You just have to click the link in the description and it'll take you to our Patreon page and on that particular page I've put together a set of files which you can download at your convenience and you'll have a lot of patterns which I've come up with okay to get you started like what we did now I've also come up with a few more all on the A major scale you don't have to leave A major for this exercise and I've also come up with a few rhythmic things so uh, I would encourage all of you to to check out the Patreon link and consider also supporting us it will be awesome for our channel to move forward and if you haven't already do subscribe to our Nathaniel school channel for a lot more lessons like the video hit subscribe turn on that bell thing for notifications and share the lesson with all your fellow musician friends i will see you in the next one cheers